yes. told somebody else's story yes. to this audience yes, because and gave the them best, a perfect example. Right, because the best speakers make the fewest words go the farthest. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to tell a story all day. And so I tell people, how many of you know, as you look at yourselves, how many of you know there's no such thing as job security? And I will raise my hand. The reason I'm doing that is that I want them to now make this man's story their story. Mm. So they'll raise their hands. You're right. Good. Here's what happened to them. What they're saying to themselves, either that has happened to me or I know someone that has happened Especially to me. Especially in today's economy. Right. Now I'm transitioning from there to here's why he became a part of this. Mm. He wanted to create security for himself. And I'm saying everybody's not going to be rich. That answers what they think. Can I get rich in this? No. People work on jobs for 40 years and, and, and don't get rich. Yet and still they come into this business and they want to get rich in six months. It's not that kind of party. Right. You've got to work. You've got to build a foundation. You've got to learn the products. You've got to learn the marketplace. You've got to develop your personality. You've got to develop your people skills. It takes patience and perseverance and persistence to build this business. But ultimately, as they say, in the beginning you'll do a lot of things you don't get paid for. But as you continue to grow, you'll get paid for a lot of things that you don't do. Right. That's the exciting thing about multi-level marketing. It allows you to build something that you can call your own. A lot of people are wishing right now that they had Les Brown in their pocket. They could carry him around when they went and talked to their prospects and they could look him in the eye and tell him that. Um, talk about how these people can develop their story or, or, or let them know because I know yes. that there's a lot of people here and we have probably 50 different countries around the world that yes. watch this mm -hmm. and a lot of them aren't aware of you yet. Yes. Um, but they need to be, right? They need yes. to know about your products and services and coaching and all that stuff. And we'll talk about that. Um, your story, your, what, what was the defining moment, that turning point for you that set your life on a different course? Well, what set my life on a different course was when my mother became ill. Mm. Because I was a state legislator in Columbus, Ohio. I'm adopted. I was born in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. I'm telling you my story. And when we were six weeks of age, we were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. I feel like Abraham Lincoln, who said, all that I am and all that I ever hoped to be, I owe to my mother. My mother was a domestic worker on Miami Beach. She, she cooked for families. We ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. We wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that Mama kept. And so as a child and goal, a turning point in my life was seeing my mother work so hard. I said, Eric, when I become a man, I'm going to take care of my mother. I want to ask you. Is there someone that you want to take care of? Is there someone that you'd like to do something special for? I want you to think about that person right now. Now, what I've done by doing that, I have segued from my story. I have now brought them into the story, and I asked them, is there someone you want to do something special for? They're saying yes. Now, that is called an imaginative leap. They leap from my story into their own story and say, yes, I know somebody. I like to do something for my coach or for my minister or for my mother or for my father or an aunt that raised me, okay? So now they're in the story. Mm. Now I will tell them how I went about doing that. So they have an interest. Who are you? What do you have? I have a story on how I brought my mother home and why should I care? The reason you should, should care is that I've been very successful at doing something that you can do too and I'm going to show you how to do it. So now you create a committed listening in the telling of the story. Or I can say, you know, uh, recently I went to a seminar, a young lady by the name of Pauline Ahi, she came to the seminar. Pauline flew from Hawaii to Los Angeles. I was very inspired as I watched her. And the reason I was inspired, here we were in a room of entrepreneurs, and the person standing in front of the room, Dr. Julie Van Putten, as she was speaking and talking about discovering your power voice, Ever so often, Pauline would lean forward, and she'd pick up a pen with her mouth, and she would write with her mouth. Pauline came from Hawaii. Pauline has no arms. Pauline has no legs. She writes with her mouth. Here's a person who decided to become an entrepreneur, who decided to build a business in multi-level marketing, and with no arms and no legs, she's building an organization. And one of the things that, that really got me when Dr. Julie Van Putten interviewed Pauline, she asked her, tell me one major obstacle you had in your life. Tell me something that you can think of. And Pauline looked, and she thought, and she said, I can't think of anything. And that, that grabbed me, because I could have given her a whole lot of things, a list of obstacles. And that showed me 
that, that Elsie Robinson was right when he said things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. Even though she was born with no arms and no legs, what has happened in her that she sees herself as an empowered person. She has not decided to become a part of a job, the journey of the broke. She decided to control her own destiny by being involved in multi-level marketing. And what I said as I looked at her, if Pauline can do it, I know I can do it. And I know you can do it.